But there's more. The discovery of the Haida Gwaii thrust offshore, captured using a 15-kilometer-long streamer with thousands of underwater microphones, is revealing the first detailed images of this system. This megathrust system has the potential to unleash powerful megathrust earthquakes and tsunamis. And because it's still forming, it's actually migrating laterally as the Pacific and North American plates collide. Understanding how subduction zones work here is crucial for hazard analysis and preparedness for future earthquakes and tsunamis. You might think that the biggest earthquakes we need to worry about in British Columbia are those big coastal megathrust events. And you'd be right, but there are other earthquakes that could also pose a significant risk. In fact, we generally talk about three types of earthquakes that could happen here. First, the shallow crustal earthquakes. These happen within the North American plate itself and can be quite damaging because they re often close to populated areas. The 1946 earthquake near Curtin A, Vancouver Island, was this type? And so was the modeled magnitude 7 point to Georgia Strait Planning Scenario earthquake. Then there are the deep intra-slab earthquakes. These happen within the subducting oceanic plate as it dives deep into the mantle. The 2001 magnitude 6.8 Nisqually earthquake near Olympia, Washington was this type. And we know that these can happen at depths of 45 to 70 kilometers beneath the Strait of Georgia and Puget Sound. Finally, there are the large subduction zone earthquakes, the ones we've been talking about, which occur at the interface between the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate.